The recent release of Dragon's Dogma 2 has sparked a surge of interest among gamers. While there are still optimization issues to be addressed, today, we're diving into the world of modding to transform Skyrim into something reminiscent of Dragon's Dogma 2. We've got a variety of mods to showcase that will elevate your gaming experience. So, without further ado, let's jump right into it. Firstly, Dragon's Dogma 2, like its predecessor, allows players to store items and change classes at inns. While Skyrim does not have a fixed class system or a job change system, using Candle Hearth adds a chest for players in each inn, somewhat replicating the feel of Dragon's Dogma 2. Beyond the chest feature, Candle Hearth also offers an expanded inn rental system, allowing players to extend their stay for a night, a week, or even a month. Additionally, inns in major cities may charge higher rates, among other features, making it an excellent mod that significantly enhances the functionality of inns. Additionally, Dragon's Dogma 2 offers carriages as a means of transportation between towns. Players can either travel in real time or choose to sleep during the journey, effectively skipping the real-time travel. This feature is reminiscent of Skyrim's Touring Carriages, which is an immersive mod for the game. It allows players to travel by carriage between cities, towns, and settlements, each with its own independent quests and scripts. Now, you can witness the scenes of traveling by carriage in real time between towns. You also have the option to disembark during the journey, or request to be woken up upon arrival, similar to Dragon's Dogma. I'm introducing this through a video because it's a fairly famous mod released in 2018, and its functionality is similar to that of Dragon's Dogma 2. Dragon's Dogma 2 is an excellent game in terms of its climbing mechanics, allowing players to scale walls and leap over obstacles with ease. Similarly, Skyrim can be modded to offer a somewhat comparable experience with the use of the Skyclimb mod. Skyclimb introduces a defined climbing mechanism to Skyrim. Utilizing the animations from EVG Animated Traversal, Skyclimb employs techniques seen in modern games to enable players to climb or jump over anything as if it were real, providing a feeling akin to Dragon's Dogma. Now let's talk about interaction mechanisms. While most modern RPG games, including Dragon's Dogma, provide mechanisms for interacting with doors or looting, Skyrim, being an older game released in 2011, seems to have fewer such interactions. To expand these mechanisms, one can install mods, and the Immersive Interactions mod can help improve this aspect. This mod enables the player to perform context-appropriate animations when interacting with the game world. For example, Special animations are executed when greeting NPCs, picking locks, or pickpocketing. Such features add immersion to gameplay, allowing players to experience animations as a natural part of gameplay without menus or commands, making Skyrim feel more like Dragon's Dogma. Next, I'll briefly discuss the combat mechanism in a way that's easy for you to understand. Dragon's Dogma inherently supports 360-degree motion rotation for characters, so you must add this feature through Skyrim's true directional movement. Moreover, as shown in the video, to use the shield and sword equip and unequip animations, and to position the shield on the character's back, you need to install immersive equipment displays. Additionally, to display health bars over the heads of followers and enemies like in the video, installing true HUD is also necessary. To implement a unified attack moveset for characters, similar to Dragon's Dogma, where the upper and lower body movements are synchronized. It is necessary to modify the traditional Skyrim method, where the upper and lower body movements are separate. For this, you must install the Attack MCO DXP mod. By using this mod, humanoid actors will be able to use attack motions that synchronize the upper and lower body in a third-person view. Once MCO ADXP is installed, you can then install separate movesets that operate on the MCO ADXP framework. For example, if you use the Dragon's Dogma Fighter moveset for Sword and Shield as shown in the video, you will be able to use one-handed sword attack motions, similar to those in Dragon's Dogma. Additionally, using the Dragon's Dogma Dagger's moveset will enable you to use the dual dagger attack motions from Dragon's Dogma, so it is recommended to use them together. When discussing collision mechanisms, I would also recommend Precision. Precision Accurate Melee Collisions mod provides physically accurate close combat collisions and procedural physics-based hit reactions in Skyrim. 
This mod enhances the combat experience by adding various features, including weapon trajectories, hit stops, and camera shake, as well as recoil when striking certain materials, thus upgrading Skyrim's combat system to be more akin to Dragon's Dogma 2. However, unlike Dragon's Dogma, Skyrim does not feature the ability to sever specific parts of large creatures, but by using the Locational Damage SKSE plugin, players can inflict additional damage and effects, such as stunning when they hit specific body parts like the legs or head of enemies, offering a somewhat similar experience to Dragon's Dogma. It's worth noting, though, that this mod is only available for SSE and may not work in the AE environment, which is a slight disappointment for this plugin mod. Now, let's delve into the topic of magic in Skyrim. While there is a magic mod from the Dragon's Dogma series available, it requires casting spells with bare hands instead of using a staff, which is why I opted not to feature it in the video. Among the mods I've experimented with, New Staff School most closely mirrors the mage combat style of Dragon's Dogma, making it my selection. It may not perfectly replicate the staff wielding and dazzling effects of Dragon's Dogma, but I believe it will meet your expectations to a satisfactory degree. Additionally, New Staff School's compatibility with staffs from various mods makes it an even more fitting choice for the Skyrim setting. While my selection of individual followers is subjective, I've chosen to introduce those with a significant amount of dialogue or a distinct voice in this video. This is because, like the followers in Dragon's Dogma who frequently engage in conversation with the protagonist, I considered these aspects along with the Fallower's personalities. The first is Vilya, a well-known follower with an extensive amount of dialogue. She offers various forms of assistance throughout the player's journey, has her own quests, and even allows for experiences of friendship and romance. The second is Lucien, a male follower with over 5,000 lines of dialogue. He's a rather timid and fearful scholar, but growing this follower can be quite enjoyable. Thirdly, there's Inigo, a member of the Khajiit race with a custom voice and over 7,000 unique lines of dialogue. He's renowned for having superior AI compared to other followers. Notably, when used alongside Vilya, as mentioned earlier, they interact and converse with each other, creating a variety of scenarios. Right then, Indigo. Let's get back to it, shall we? It is Inigo, not Indigo. Exactly. <laughs> Point taken. I do not know about your skill with a blade, but your intellect is clearly sharper than most. Glad to have you with us, um... Uh... Lucian! Lucian, yes, Lucian. Uh, I am sorry. You're doing it on purpose now. <laughs> now let's talk about the follower framework. Since Dragon's Dogma allows you to travel with a party of up to four members, any framework that increases the maximum number of followers could work. However, I particularly recommend Nether's follower framework. This is because, given the clear distinction of character classes in Dragon's Dogma, Nether's follower framework offers a feature to set followers' classes, which I believe will enhance your experience of the game's party system. Additionally, using Swiftly Order Squad alongside NFF could be beneficial. This is because the followers introduced earlier use individual scripts, making it challenging to fully utilize NFF's features. Therefore, Swiftly Order Squad allows you to quickly issue basic commands such as wait, teleport to you, or access their inventory. Particularly for Dragon's Dogma 2, while it's not identical to the quick command system using the D-pad on a controller, there is a feature that allows you to similarly issue four types of commands swiftly, I believe this mode would be quite satisfactory for users to employ. Now let's discuss creatures last. I'll introduce four creature modes, all of which appear in Dragon's Dogma 2. The first is Cyclopes Mihail Monsters and Animals. This mod adds Cyclopes from Dragon's Dogma to Skyrim. Although you can't climb and grapple the Cyclopes as in Dragon's Dogma, it's a symbolic creature of the game, and it would be a great addition to Skyrim. The second is the Griffin mod. This mod introduces three types of griffins to Skyrim, the powerful and dangerous Snow Griffin, Dark Griffin, and the regular Griffin. Generally, they won't attack unless provoked, but if you invade their territory, they can become very aggressive. Players should be cautious. If you're not at a high enough level or prepared, you could easily die to a griffin. 
The third is Harpies Mihail Monsters and Animals. This mod adds fierce little monsters, Harpies, a mix of bird and woman, to the Skyrim region. Although they don't possess the ability to put characters to sleep like in Dragon's Dogma, Harpies are still iconic creatures that are essential for the mod. Lastly, Goblins Mihail Monsters and Animals. This mod adds goblins to the Skyrim region. While it's slightly disappointing that it doesn't include red goblins like those in Dragon's Dogma, this mod is notable for adding goblins that are faithful to the original lore of Skyrim. Therefore, although the nature of the goblins differs somewhat from those in Dragon's Dogma, if you're looking to add goblins to your game, this mod is a good choice. With this, I conclude the modding guide video that brings the Dragon's Dogma experience to Skyrim. Although the mods I introduce do not function identically to those in Dragon's Dogma, I have done my best to present those that closely capture its essence, and I hope you understand my efforts. Your subscriptions, likes, notifications, and support through Patreon greatly contribute to the channel's growth. The voiceover for this video was funded by the generous donations of our supporters and my personal funds. It was created with my intention to communicate with you, despite its imperfections. Therefore, I kindly ask you to refrain from leaving any harsh comments about the voiceover. In the next video, I will return with more valuable information. Until then, enjoy your time in Skyrim.